Hey guys, it's Danny. Today we're gonna talk about what makes orchids grow larger. I actually had some interesting developments, let's say, this year, and I drew some conclusions. But before we get into the subject, I would like to announce the giveaway winners once again, and I will actually extend the time in which you guys can reply to me uh, because I've replied to your comments on the giveaway page and you didn't reply back. I've also posted a community post yesterday and I didn't hear back from you guys or actually all of you guys, only three of the winners responded to me. So that's concerning. So I'll just mention you guys in this video just to make sure. And you have another two days to go back to the giveaway page, the giveaway video actually. And if you are logged in with your account, the comment you left me on that video will appear at the top. So check back, you have a reply from me with what you have to do. The winners that I selected are Mirela Razum uh, for my orchids. And I will have to say, I'm sorry if I butcher your names. Not my intention, but I hope you can understand. The Schroeder voucher, Egle, which I've talked to. So we're good, I also reply to you and Karen Burrows. Karen, please visit the giveaway video and reply to my comment. Then we have the Repot Me vouchers. Jackie Chamberlain, I did not hear from you. Peter uh, Fotopoulos, I did not hear from you. Fabio Zanella, we talked. And Carmen Perez, I did not hear from you. So please go back to the giveaway video and reply to my reply. And my pots, Bruno, we talked, I heard from you. And Ej, you didn't contact me, so please contact me, go back to that video. If you're not very tech savvy, you can reply to this video as well if you want and I'll reply back in this video, it's okay. But guys, please, you have two days. If I do not hear from you in two days, I will just have to pick other winners. I'm really, really sorry. So hopefully you get to see this video. I'll put it in the title just so you don't skip the video. You might have <laughs> skipped the video on Saturday, but I hope you don't skip this one. So that said, let us get back to today's subject. Okay, so as many of you already know, this year I started to grow part of my orchids outside. The reason was the quantity of light that I could offer to my plants. In my growth space, there is quite a lot of light. I do offer artificial light as well, but in the summertime, the sun is very high in the sky. So the places that are really bright in my growth space become minimal. And I have a lot of highlight plants, which I try to cram on my southern window. And it's not the best of situations because they're big, they take up a lot of space. So I thought, you know what? The most abundant resource in this environment is sun. I have to utilize it. So I put all of my worm growers and hot growers outside and I discovered such an immense difference in growth compared to the growth space. So that led me to draw some conclusions. Some of these I was already suspecting, but now I kind of confirmed it and I feel like they kind of go against what our expectations are. And pretty much it all has to do with how everything works together. So today I'm gonna talk about that everything. And you know me, I like to compare things to make things more visual, just so we all understand better. I will compare what is happening with an orchid with a real life situation. Now, just to be clear here, we're not talking about stressed orchids, rootless, um, recovering, orchids that have certain affections and so on. I'm talking about perfectly healthy orchids established with good root systems. It's pretty intuitive to believe that the size of an orchid depends on the environment. We all know that if we put a plant in lower light, it will stretch towards the light, it will become um, stringy, it will not be dense, but it will be taller or some people suggest it will be bigger. With orchids, this is really not the case. Although I have encountered a lot of opinions that it is actually the case with orchids as well. Some people suggest that if you don't give a lot of light to Phalaenopsis, the flower spike will extend more. And not only with Phalaenopsis, but with other orchids as well. Pretty much some opinions are that the um, size of the orchid depends a lot on light. That is the major factor. My experience actually tells me completely the opposite. And it's not an experience of this year only, it's an experience of the entire years in which I've grown orchids, but this year it has been a little bit more accentuated because light is a very important factor in an orchid's growth, but it needs to be correlated with some other factors to give us some pretty surprising results. 
Now, of course, plants can actually stretch to the light. But this stretching and enlargement of structures is not for free. It comes at a cost. So here is where the real life example comes into play. Let's imagine the growth of an orchid as building a house. An orchid, just like us building a house, will have a set amount of material. With this material, we can make a smaller house or a bigger house. We can use the quantity of materials we have to make a level house without a first floor. So we can extend it and make it larger or actually wider on one level. If we wish to build a level, we need to reduce the quantity, the footprint, pretty much, to have enough materials to build another floor. Well, plants in general work in the same way. If they want to stretch out a particular component, they will still use the same quantity of resources and they will sacrifice something in the benefit of something else. Usually, plants which stretch for the light are not bushy, are not wide. The distances between the nodes will be bigger, so the plant will not have the same quantity of leaves per a given dimension. It will still produce leaves, but a lot fewer, just to compensate for the fact that it is growing a longer structure. Orchids can be capable of something like this, but not to the same extent, not nearly actually to the same extent, and some of them, I personally believe, don't do it at all. They actually work with the resources they have in a very different way. And to top it all off, light is only one of the resources. There are other resources we need to take into account as well, such as temperature. Temperature will determine the speed with which the orchid grows or the speed with which we build our house. Also, water and nutrients. Without these two elements, plants and orchids cannot grow pretty much at all. It's pretty obvious that if we don't water our orchid, it will shrivel and ultimately it will perish. So it absolutely needs water to transport all of its fluids. We also need nutrients to build all of these structures. Now let's ponder a little bit on the nutrient thing because this was another bit of an epiphany that I had this summer. I know there are some articles which try to be different in my opinion. They suggest that plants actually do not use nutrients for food. Nutrients just assist photosynthesis. But the photosynthesis itself is the process with which plants and orchids produce their food. And well, that's true theoretically. But again, let's think of our example with the house, saying that plants only need sun, air and water to produce their food and to survive is equal to saying all you need to build a house is the terrain and money. And well, in an abstract world, yes, theoretically that's all you need because it is implied that with money you can hire the workforce, you can buy the materials, so you can build a house. All you need to have is the place and the money, right? But practically, you cannot build a house out of money, it's just not doable. It's same with plants and orchids in general. We cannot have a proper house without bricks. In the same way, plants and orchids cannot have proper leaves without calcium and other elements to build the structures. And I think the best way to think about it is the building of the house. It's not enough to have money and a proper space. You need professional people to help you design and build the house, professional engineers and so on and so forth. You need the materials, you will need electricity, maybe a gas or whatever you want to put into your house for it to function properly and serve as a shelter for you and your family, right? So just with money and a place, practically when it comes down to it, you cannot do anything. Even though the theory says that yes, sure, you can build a house with those two resources. So do apply this style of thinking with plants and orchids as well, because if you start to do that, the results are pretty spectacular. So now let's actually look at some results. Now, for some of you which are older on my channel, this might ring a bell. I said once in a video that for me, when it comes to roots and orchids, more is more. Well, after this year, I actually concluded that with any fundamental structure of the orchid or vital structure, more is more. More leaves will support more growth. More canes will support more of everything. More roots will support 
more canes, more leaves, more flowers. So with orchids, more is more. I don't think we can cut corners. I think the only reasons why orchids don't produce too many roots or too many leaves or small leaves is because they simply don't have the resources to do so. Now, of course, most of the orchids that we have in cultivation are hybrids, but these hybrids have been bred for production. This is what humans like. A lot of flowers. Well, how do we support that production of flowers? With a lot of leaves and a lot of roots. So this is my motto, my belief system when it comes to orchids, particularly after this year. And everything that I'm going to talk about does revolve around this belief. So here is a first example. This is a Dendrobium phalaenopsis. It is the snow jade, I think, yeah. It was in bloom earlier than the others. So I have this orchid for about a year and a half. And as it was growing in the growth space without too much light, because Catlias did have priority, this guy was a little further from the light. He did not actually grow much. When I purchased this orchid, if I'm not mistaken, this was just maturing. This matured afterwards, but when this orchid produced this particular cane, we actually did have quite a good root system. It wasn't one of the rootless orchids, and you can see this orchid did have a good root system by the size of this cane. If this orchid would have been stressed and rootless, this cane wouldn't have been this tall. It would have been smaller. Everything would have been smaller. But I hope you can see a little bit of a difference in this particular cane, which bloomed, um, I cannot complain, but look at the size of the leaves and of the structures. I believe it's more than double the size of the previous cane. And in this instance, we weren't talking about a stressed orchid. We were just referring to an orchid which did not have the proper materials. It didn't have the proper light in my case. So what happened was the orchid created a smaller structure in lack of one of the materials it needed. If I were to go with the resources which say um, in less light orchids will create bigger structures, you know, to receive more light, um, this would be a paradox. Now, this particular growth uh, developed in the past two months, not more. It grew from nothing to this in two months, but it did so outside. In the outside world, this orchid had a much better light because of its position. It also received direct sunshine in the morning and late afternoon. Other than that, very, very bright shade outside. Um, so it did receive much better light. It received higher temperatures, so the speed with which the house, the structure was created, was increased. It also received fertilizer, which just happens to be the same fertilizer that I use with everything. So the fertilizer quantity didn't increase, but it did actually receive fertilizer to support all of this growth. And of course, it received adequate water because without water, we cannot have the growth, we cannot have the transport of nutrients, transport of sap, and so on and so forth. So pretty much this work it had all the materials or the professional workforce, all the speed in the world, and this is the result. Something like this I could not achieve in my growth space. And I'm not only referring to the Dendrobium phalaenopsis orchids here, I'm also referring to my Catlias, as you will see. However, why would we want big structures with orchids? Yes, more is more and all that good stuff, but how does it actually work for us? We want big structures and healthy structures because with big structures and healthy structures come big, healthy flowers. This is the beautiful Dendrobium white surprise. And isn't he a surprise? Now, this is the um, only remaining Dendrobium which has this impressive blooming and has actually multiple flower spikes remaining after the storm. So I personally will have to disagree with the articles which suggest that orchids don't need fertilizer, they just need sun and uh, air and water or whatever to photosynthesize and that's it. That's a very abstract way of thinking about things. If you want to be practical about it, you need light, you need temperature, you need water and you definitely need nutrients to achieve all of these. If one of these elements is missing, you'll absolutely not have the full potential that an orchid can put out. As I showed you in the previous example, even if I fertilize my plants, the fact that I didn't have enough light meant the plant did not grow to its full potential. 
If I would have light and water and proper temperature, but I wouldn't have the proper nutrients to support all of this growth, this growth would not be possible. Now, orchids have a backup plan. They do store nutrients, water, and energy in the canes and pseudobulbs, but at some point that will get depleted. With more growth, more roots, and more flowers, that energy will get depleted. And if it's not replenished, what we will end up with is smaller and smaller growth. No matter how much light, how much warmth, how much water we provide, growths will become smaller and smaller throughout the years. It's not gonna happen overnight, it's not probably gonna happen in a year, but afterwards, slowly but surely, each year things will be progressively worse. Not only will the proper amount of material support nice blooms and just this showy display that we all love, it will also support the health of the orchid and its evolution and growth. So let's take for example the BC Saint Andre. This orchid had one direction of growth for almost two years. I put it outside, suddenly it has three. When you have an abundance of materials to work with, you will work with them as an orchid. Remember, I'm using metaphors here. So this orchid now has three directions of growth. This one, this one, and this one. And this comes after a repotting in self-watering. So what will happen now with three directions of growth, we're gonna have three times as much roots as this orchid would put out with only one direction of growth. More roots means more hydration. More hydration means more supported growth. More structures mean a lot more resistance to external elements. If this orchid, let's say, doesn't get watered for a month, she's gonna be absolutely fine because we have so many pseudobulbs just retaining that water. If we only had two pseudobulbs or three pseudobulbs, obviously this orchid would not fare all that well. So I know there were a few of you which commented in the past that you're not really interested in that really showy display of blooms. You just want to enjoy the plant as it is. You're happy with three, four flowers, which is absolutely fine, but all of these elements, the light, the temperature, and the nutrients, they don't only support big showy blooms, they support the general health of the orchid and its general development, its resistance to disease, to pests, to external uh, factors, and so on and so forth. So it's not a question of greed here or of showiness or whatever you want to call it, it is actually in the benefit of our plant. In the end, of course, there are other factors we need to keep in mind, such as the age of the orchid. We cannot expect young orchids or seedlings to start growing these massive structures if they don't have the age necessary, but I think these are all implied, and everything that I talked about refers to perfectly healthy, adapted, mature orchids. And this also doesn't mean that you need to put all of your orchids outside. Of course, this only refers to the orchids which can handle your outside conditions, whatever those might be. You can get the very same results if in your growing space you have a lot of sun, a lot of light, even a lot of artificial light, and you provide all of these elements. So it's not like everything is better outside. No, it just works if you lack sunlight inside, obviously, and you can work with the orchids which can handle the temperatures and all of the other conditions. You can get perfectly good results inside as well with LED panels or whatever your light uh, source might be because not all orchids have the same requirements. Some orchids don't want to build a huge house, <laughs> you know what I mean? So work with your orchid, know its requirements and try to provide as much as you can. And yeah, in the end, more is more. Everything is more with orchids. That has been my conclusion after this pretty much eye-opening year, to be honest. I believe in November, maybe December, my orchids will come in the growth space because it's gonna be a little bit too cold for them, but by then the sun will be very low, so my growth space will be very illuminated. And I think starting March, I will start to put my warm and hot growers outside because, oh boy, this year has been so successful for them outside. So before I let you go, please remember to contact me if you are one of the lucky giveaway winners. And to conclude it all, um, my motto in life <laughs> when it comes to our kids now is more is more. And I am a person that does want more. I want to see how much I can obtain from these orchids. And of course, not all will respond this quick or this good. We have to take into account the growth pattern and everything uh, when it comes to orchids. Everything that I showed you that had good results also had pretty speedy growth. There are orchids which no matter what will have slow growth. So that needs to be taken into account as well. But 
From now on, I really will not restrain myself when it comes to the best light that I can provide, the best feeding schedule, uh, temperatures and all of that stuff and we'll see what results we'll have in the future. So that's it, thank you guys so much for hanging out with me today and watching this video, hope you've enjoyed it. You know the drill, like or dislike this video below, subscribe to my channel for regular orchid videos, tutorials and discussions of the sorts and if you like YouTube to notify you whenever I upload a new video, just turn on notifications for my channel. If you're interested in my setup and the products that I use with my orchids, just expand the description, everything is listed there. And with that said, I'll see you guys next time. Bye!